For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba, researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, joins me for Sadna's view, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Um, the ANC Secretary General, Gwede Mansashi, believes that the ANC will self-correct in December and also the ANC stalwarts are engaged in other processes with a view to self-correct. What is your view on that? Well, you know, self-correction is a cliché. It is said the ANC always self-corrects. But the ANC has never been in the state that it's in now and where it faces even the possibility of imploding or disappearing from the face of the earth. Nevertheless, you have not just the stalwarts and Gwede Mantashe saying this, but you have a report, an article by Hilary um, Choffey in Business Day, bu the business section of, company section of Business Day, saying that fund managers are watching the ANC conference very carefully. It's not clear to me exactly what they're watching, what they're going to conclude from whoever gets elected, things like this. But as we go at self-correction, there's nothing inevitable about the ANC returning to what it was or what is imagined it was, because I think sometimes there's a certain amount of romanticization. But the ANC definitely was an organization uh, where it had a lot of prestige because uh, very many people had seen the exemplary leaders and also the exemplary cadres in many cases, people who had a life of service. And that service was not for their own benefit. They didn't get money for what they did. They actually served the people who were the poorest of the poor. And it's hard to see that being realized simply by having a conference at the end of the year, or in the case of the uh, stalwarts, I don't think they think it will be this alone, but having its own national consultative conference. You must remember that a lot of people who will participate in the December conference have really got interests that are not to do with the well-being of the majority of South Africans or the well-being of the ANC. They really are trying to get some people elected in order to derive benefits. And you have a phenomenon which was not present in the early days of buying of branches, buying of members. Uh, a lot of uh, branches and provinces their memberships balloon. And the ANC, ANC itself has found that this has been irregular. And you can see how members go up, members go down, things like this. So that there is a, a problem in terms of the illegality that is prevalent within the ANC. And there's a lot at stake because the people do this because they want to have benefits. And at various levels, the benefits are higher than at others. Um, if so-and-so wins or so-and-so loses, some people will not get certain contracts, their income, their wealth will decrease, things like that. And there's a possibility that the conference will not take place. There's a possibility that the conference can break up into chaos, that as in Eastern Cape, people can decide that they're going to lose the conference, and rather than they have that emerge, they will find a way of destroying it. You know, you can do things to electricity in a room. You can uh, go and um, do something to the venue, make the venue unusable. There are a whole lot of ways in which people know how to mess up a conference. Now, there can be security, but the main people having the security are those who are likely to want to break up the conference if their candidate doesn't get elected. And if President Zuma's candidate does get elected, what does it mean for self-correction? I'm not saying 
that we must assume that with Ramaphosa or Zwilliam Kizia that everything will necessarily go okay. But um, the only way of not having the conference broken up may appear at some point to be if Nkosazana Tlamini Zuma or someone acceptable to Zuma is going to be elected. Now, if that's the case, what's hap what really has changed in terms of how the ANC is today? Um, so I don't think, when Mantashe says the ANC will self-correct in December, that's a statement of faith. It's not based on how things are operating in the ANC today, and I don't see that necessarily happening. So how do you see things unfolding? Well, you know, it depends on um, how people themselves respond inside and outside the ANC. We mustn't assume that the ANC is the only place where things happen. Uh, you've got a lot of actors or potential actors in South Africa <coughs> who can claim the space of politics as journalists in Krima Media, as doctors, as teachers, as um, engineers, a number of different people can, through organizations that they already belong to, or through forming organizations, try and reclaim the democratic space that is being eroded so badly. So my only way of seeing this thing being remedied is by looking beyond the ANC. Now, I'm not saying that the ANC will disappear or should disappear, uh, but it must be, pre if it's present, it must be present subject to its contributing towards the retrieval of democratic life in South Africa. And um, in order to have democratic life in South Africa, it's hard to imagine it being initiated by the ANC itself. And there are a number of organizations at the moment who are in the, what is called the civil society terrain. Sometimes they're claiming too much of, for what they have done. Uh, sometimes they are doing much less than they could do. But that would be where I would look. I've said this a lot of times before, but it's becoming urgent now because people are getting demoralized. They can see we're getting poorer because of corruption, because of state and enterprises not functioning. All of these things are related to the ANC's relationship to government. We've got to end that relationship and actually rebuild our democracy and use our own power wherever we are. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's policy about whether the ANC will self-correct.